Hello, I'm Frank Kane, and this is Frankly Speaking, the show where we drill deep into the insights of leading policymakers in the Middle East. With us today is His Royal Highness Prince Abdulaziz bin Turki Al Faisal, the first sports minister of Saudi Arabia, who will be talking to us about the challenges and opportunities involved in making Saudi Arabia a sporting nation and a destination for international sporting events. Your Royal Highness, welcome to Frankly Speaking. The pleasure is mine and thank you for having me. Your Royal Highness, you are an accomplished racing driver and it has just been announced that Saudi Arabia will be staging a major Formula One event next year. Immediately, the international media uh, began again, I must say, with accusations of sports washing. Frankly speaking, how can you convince the world that there is, is no merit to these allegations? Well, as you have experienced uh, throughout the uh, past couple of years since the launch of the uh, Vision 2030, sports has been uh, or is a pillar uh, in, this vision, in this version that is guided and led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince. Sports is a very important sector and it's a very important um, uh, industry within the kingdom that we wish to develop, we wish to grow, we wish to enhance within the kingdom. And uh, part of this is hosting um, such events that, uh, that enhance the uh, capabilities of, of, uh, of, uh, of these sports within the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. So um, you can call it whatever you want to call it, but this is a strategy that uh, that has uh, been launched, that is ongoing, that is changing social life within the kingdom. We've seen the first tourist visa happening because of a Formula E event that happened in 2018, which launched, which became a, a tourist visa. We've seen live concerts. We've seen a big social change. And you've experienced part of this change. So this is a, an ongoing uh, 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 development that is happening within the kingdom and with the support of the other entities uh, and all entities within the 2030 vision. It is a plan that we wish to accomplish in 2030 and hopefully even beyond. And um, it is driven by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, who uh, basically uh, believes in the power of sports to change lives uh, within the kingdom uh, and within the quality of, of, uh, of life uh, uh, program to enhance and better the quality of life within the kingdom. So hosting such events will help us grow different uh, kind of sports within the kingdom and will increase the diversity and um, uh, attention towards these sports that will hopefully lead to uh, Saudis participating in these sports in the future. OK. And the the race will go ahead, will it? Uh, uh, not, not from the point of view of international boycotts or anything like that, but from the point of view of health and safety, it will be safe for spectators to attend? Well, definitely health uh, and safety is the number one priority. And we've seen that uh, a lot of races regarding Formula One this year have been held in numerous uh, countries and numerous venues uh, with the health and safety of, uh, with the health and safety measures that are going on. Last weekend, it was in Bahrain. This coming weekend, it's in, uh, in Abu Dhabi. And for sure, we can meet uh, these regulations that, that uh, make sure that everyone's health and safety is a priority. And if we are still under such, such circumstances, then definitely uh, we will make sure that the health and safety measures are met uh, to host the event in Saudi, inshallah. Your Royal Highness, you highlighted the role that sport is going to play, is playing uh, within the Vision 2030 strategy. Uh, but it seems to me, quite frankly, that it has a lot of competition. Uh, Saudis now have a lot of options for entertainment, don't they? Live music. Uh, uh, lots of other events. Um, can it uh, win over uh, uh, people from these competing attractions? Uh, well, I really think that it will uh, it will be more much more difficult for them than for us. Uh, sports is is growing internationally, and sports is, uh, for, I mean, for the other entity, engagement uh, from sports is happening with the, with with new experiences for the fans. And as we can see, even during the pandemic, uh, sports are the live attractions that have continued uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, to, to happen. And, um, and people are following them live on, on TV nowadays, much more than they used to attend. 
But I really think that um, competition is a good thing. It's never a bad thing. And uh, I really think that sports is already has the, the basis and the tools and the uh, the fan base uh, to keep on growing. Saudi Arabia's population is below, uh, 70% of the population is below the age of 40. So we have a growing young nation that, uh, that are very passionate about sports. And we are diversifying these uh, interests through other sports uh, within the kingdom. And hopefully this will lead into a growing nation that is interested in all kinds of sports, inshallah, in the future. Okay, you, you think that you can attract them away from cinemas and live music and pop concerts and that kind of thing. Very good. Um, again, with relation to Vision 2030, of course, there are billions of dollars associated with global sports events. But it seems to me that a lot of that money goes to very few people, you know, to, to players, to agents, to broadcasting companies. How does sports help uh, diversify the Saudi economy and help enrich the overall population, the overall citizenship of Saudi Arabia? Well, the, the economic impact that we face or that, we, that we've experienced from hosting such events in terms of uh, the number of uh, jobs that are created during these events, if you take in consideration uh, Formula E or, or, the, the, or the boxing, and they all came within one season, which is the Dreya season. And we had 12,000 jobs that were created uh, to, to set up uh, such events within one month. So we had back-to-back -back events every weekend, big events that were hosted. And, and that created a new um, dimension of uh, job creation that will benefit Saudis uh, in them. Uh, a lot of today's uh, employees within the ministry uh, were actually started off as volunteers during these events, and we saw them qualified enough, and we hired them. So uh, it, it's opening new job opportunities. If you look at the hospitality industry, if you look at the number of hotels that it engages, uh, engages in, if you look at the restaurants and the transportation, um, all of these things will benefit from these, from these uh, events that are hosted in Saudi. And these are this is the diversification of the economy uh, from within one city that hosts these events that will benefit Saudis and Saudi companies. We deal with 90% uh, of our dealings throughout the setup of these events are through Saudi uh, companies. Some of them were small and medium companies. And today, within three years, they've become uh, huge enterprises that are uh, not only organizing and, um, and uh, setting up uh, sports event, but they're also getting into entertainment and culture and other events that they can utilize. And, and, and through the experience that they gain through sports, uh, have opened up ventures for them to participate in these, uh, in these, um, in these fields of, of, of new businesses. Uh, the, the contribution to the GDP uh, in 2016 was 2.4 uh, billion. Today, it's 6.5 in 2019 uh, billion. So it shows you the growth of this economy um, and where it can, it can reach, inshallah, in the near future. Uh, there seems little doubt in your mind mm -hmm. that Saudi Arabia can stage these events. Uh, but I, I, I want to ask whether Saudis can hope to fully participate and successfully participate in them, uh, because Saudi Arabia has very high rates of obesity globally. It is, it is a car-driven culture, uh, and the climate can be prohibitive for outside sports training. What can you do, quite frankly, to change Saudis from being spectators to being participants and hopefully winners in sport? Well, uh, this is the beauty of the 2030 vision. The 2030 vision brought everyone together to, to plan on what are the issues that we have today and how can we solve them all together to move forward. Uh, today, you cannot solve these issues alone. Uh, so uh, the Ministry of, of Sports cannot solve the issue of facilities and people being able to walk on the streets by itself. It needs all the other entities to help it uh, achieve that goal. And today with the 2030 vision, we share our plans, we share our vision, we share our uh, uh, goals and, uh, and uh, ambitions. And we work uh, hand in hand with the other entities to make sure that we deliver on that. As you mentioned, uh, the, the, the health uh, situation within Saudi, obesity, diabetes too, is directly linked to, to movement, and we'd like to get people to become more active. And that is why one of the main pillars within the 2030 vision is mass participation. 
and getting the uh, participation of Saudis within sports for uh, more than half an hour a week uh, to be increased from 13% in 2015 to uh, 20% by 2020 and hopefully 40% by 2030. And this means the collaboration of all entities to make sure that Saudis can actually, um, uh, or not just Saudis, but also residents within the kingdom can actually uh, go out, find the right facilities, find the right way to, to participate in these sports that they, that they enjoy. And we encourage them to do so. Um, we've seen a huge spike in, 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 in participation, even during the pandemic. Uh, because people had more time to spend at their homes and they needed some things to, uh, to, uh, to, to occupy themselves. So we created online and digital and TV programs that, that we saw these numbers uh, skyrocket, which was actually a benefit for them. So even when the uh, lockdown uh, uh, was, was, was open, people uh, maintained uh, uh, these habits uh, and saw that they can actually benefit out of them. So... I think with all of these programs, uh, uh, in the end, sports will be and is a tool to benefit uh, the people of Saudi Arabia and, inshallah, to, to deal with these issues that we have uh, with the support of all the other entities. So let me take you forward a couple of years, Your Royal Highness, uh, to 2022 uh, and the FIFA World Cup. Saudi Arabia's performance in 2018 in the Russia World Cup was, frankly speaking, not very good. But... You, I'm sure you have plans to, uh, uh, to see some kind of improvement on that performance in 22 in Qatar. Uh, what hopes do you have for, for uh, achieving greater success? And if Saudi Arabia qualifies, will you go to <coughs> Qatar to participate? Well, we already uh, participate in, in sporting events that happen between uh, Qatar and Saudi Arabia, especially on international level. So our teams do go and compete in Qatar and the Qatar teams do come and, and compete in Saudi and our national team goes and plays there and their national team comes here. So that's not going to be an issue. Um, regarding uh, our performance, uh, so far um, we put some changes in hand with the, with the support or we, we as the ministry helped the federation to, to, to fix certain things within the uh, federation to, um, uh, to make sure that we have a solid plan. Uh, and as you know, a sporting plan takes a generation to, to develop. We think that we have a strong uh, team that will qualify, inshallah, soon to the um, World Cup. We have a very strong uh, under-23 team that most of them are going to be the players that are going to play in the 2022 World Cup. And they've qualified uh, to the Olympics for the first time since uh, 96. So it's been 24 years since we qualified uh, to the Olympics, which we have qualified. And uh, we have a lot of uh, youth programs that we've uh, engaged through the Ministry of Sport, through the Olympic Committee, and the different uh, federations. One of them is the uh, Football Federation. The Football Federation uh, just hired a, a technical director who is going to put in plan the 10-year uh, plan for the, uh, uh, for the Football uh, Federation in terms of competitions, in terms of uh, a talent development in terms of scouting programs and so on. And, and I'm really optimistic about the future of Saudi Arabia, especially with the support that we have today and the unconditional support that we have today from the Crown Prince towards these programs and making sure that we meet our KPIs by 2030. The World Cup is definitely a milestone that we need to qualify to and hopefully we can perform uh, a better performance than our last performance. Um, and so on, we can build on that. You need to build hope and you need to build uh, glory for the youth to make sure that uh, they have a goal, a goal to, uh, to aim for. And that's what we're planning on doing, inshallah. Let me ask you about the role of women, Your Royal Highness, because this is another uh, key element of the Vision 2030 strategy, isn't it? Uh, and women have been encouraged to be both uh, spectators and participants in athletic sports. Over, over the past couple of years. Uh, but has this encountered any resistance? How can this resistance be overcome from certain elements of Saudi society? Well, any change will face some resistance, uh, whether it was women participating in sports or others. Uh, all of our programs today that we do in the Ministry of Sports and the 
Federation is all about diversity and inclusion, and we have to make sure that everyone's involved uh, in all of our programs. Um, and to give you just a shed light about certain things that how this has evolved towards a positive things. In 2015, we had zero national teams, uh, female national teams that are participating under the national teams. Today, we have 23 uh, national teams that are participating in the name of the country, female national teams I'm talking. 38 of them have uh, female board members that represent uh, female sports within these federations. So uh, we have we had uh, 32 federations in 2017. Today, we have 64 uh, federations. Uh, 38 of them have uh, female board members that represent uh, female sports within these federations. So there is a lot of change that have happened within the ecosystem of sports that is regard to, to women as we speak. The first uh, football league is is being played within the kingdom, within the kingdom, with 24 uh, uh, local clubs that are competing in a national uh, competition. So uh, these things are, were unheard of uh, in the past, and now they are happening, and they are finding support also from the um, uh, the, the 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 players and their families. Uh, things are changing, and things are changing to the positive, and we have to make sure that it changes in the right way with the right uh, momentum to make sure that we, we put the right steps in and for it to be sustainable for the future. We don't want to do one thing today and then uh, regret doing it uh, in the next uh, two or three years and then cancel it or something like that. You have touched on a subject there which is close to my heart, which is football. Uh, and I want to ask you one final question, Your Royal Highness. Uh, Saudi Arabia tried to buy Newcastle United Football Club. Uh, maybe it will succeed sometime in the future in that attempt. I'd be interested in, in your view in that. But also, I want to ask you, frankly, why did you spend... Well, sorry, why did you try to spend so much money on a mediocre football club and you didn't try to buy a good football club like Tottenham Hotspur? <laughs> well, thank you for the question. I think you should... Uh, revert that question to the PIF. As you know, the Ministry of Sport does not uh, invest uh, in, in uh, um, or does not have the capability to invest. We develop sports within the kingdom. Your Royal Highness, I'm very grateful for your candid responses and it's been a great pleasure to have you on Frankly Speaking today. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you.